Next, we have um, our Harper's Magazine Scholarship in memory of I.F. Stone to Juan Arreando from Columbia Graduate School of Journalism, presented by Rick MacArthur, publisher of Harper's. Juan grew up in, the, in Medellin during the 1990s drug war. He's a former Neiman Fellow at Harvard, an experienced photojournalist, and because apparently he doesn't have enough to do, he also uh, picked up a master's degree in organic chemistry from Carnegie Mellon. Is that it? <laughs> uh, uh, there you go. Uh, I like uh, connections, and I'm delighted to be giving uh, the award to a native son of Medellin, partly because I know the city well, because one of my daughters was born there, and actually we could have, we could have met. <laughs> uh, I, uh, at Harper's, uh, created this scholarship because we want to keep alive the name of I.F. Stone, who's best known for his political writing, and not uh, well enough known for this brilliant piece of foreign reporting he did in 1946 called Underground to Palestine, uh, which describes the exodus or the blockade running of the so-called displaced persons, uh, Jewish refugees of the Holocaust, uh, to Palestine. Uh, it's an exemplary piece of reporting, and if you want uh, an insight into why there's still no peace uh, in the region, this is a great place to start. So, congratulations, Juan. And here's your book. Uh, hi, everyone. How is okay. everyone doing? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, I came to photography and basically to journalism out of curiosity. I wanted to understand and explore uh, and make sense of my troubled country, Colombia. Uh, I would use my vacation time sick days and non-pay leaves from my chemistry job to fly to Colombia and do stories. And there was plenty of stories to do. Um, but there's one story that still to this day sticks in my mind. And in 2014, I was invited by the indigenous community uh, to watch, document, and photograph the, um, the exhumation of 14 bodies. FARC rebels have come to the village and killed these 14 people, accusing them of aiding the Colombian army. Uh, they were mothers and children included. Um, the massacre is remembered as Nembi de um, and it's on the Pacific coast of Colombia. And I remember walking through muddy roads, climbing mountains to get to the um, mass grave. Um, and I remember hearing people crying and screaming out of frustration. And the collective sorrow got into me, but I kept photographing. That's what I was there for. And one of the elders came, offered me a drink, which was very strong. It was alcohol. And I started coughing, but he embraced me. He told me, you're here to um, maintain the memory of our loved ones and the memory of this conflict. And it's odd to say, but in that moment, I knew that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to tell stories from my country in Latin America. So I came back, I gave a month notice to Merck Pharmaceuticals where I used to work in Raleigh, and I packed my stuff, put some things in storage, and moved to Colombia. And I have not looked back ever since. And for the past six years, I've been documenting the hopes, the struggles of families in Colombia and in Venezuela. Uh, I was fortunate there to be in 2016 with a peace agreement between FARC, one of the largest rebel groups. Um, what we thought would end a 53-year civil war. Uh, but unfortunately, our current government refuses to implement the peace process, and that has led to almost 700 social leaders, uh, social, social leaders killed, 190 former rebels. Um, and while this is still unfolding, I decided to take a break and do my master's at Columbia Journalism School, where I hope I can enhance my reporting, my writing, and my visual skills. And I can't wait now in fall to go back and continue to tell the stories. I'm honored to be here. Thank you so much for supporting all the awardees and my work. Thank you.